of not fire me fights back as elder statesman Afe Babalala accuses him, fire she and Oni, of failing to develop Ekiti State. Nabikano speaks on his continued detention, trial, and health challenge, says his freedom will bring immediate end to insecurity in the Southeast. And later on the show, CJN to receive 5.39 million naira monthly as reps pass judicial officer's salaries bill. Today on the program, I will be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju and Chris Kendi Uwandu. Gentlemen, it's Palm Sunday. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to Journalist Thank you for having us. Right. Journalist Thank you starts now. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's begin in Ogun State, where the issue of bad roads continue or remains a source of headache and subject of outcry, even on this platform. A viral video has surfaced in which about 500 pastors were captured, supplicating and urging the state governor, Dr. Abiodun, to rehabilitate the Agbado Okiaro Akute Road in fulfillment of his re-election pledge. Reacting to the video in a statement, the State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Adia Kisoya, so the government has completed half of the Alagbole Songwater Road, while the remaining axis was captured in the 2024 budget. The commissioner stressed that the state government has never abandoned its responsibilities in the area of road construction, having constructed more than 600 kilometers of roads since coming on board in 2019. Let's share part of the video with you. That this road will be done. That we do it to beggar. But now we are not saying anything. Today we want to ask God to remember us. We want to pray that God will remember us. Look at today. See, all the people we are pastors. We are all pastors from this Abado Kiaro. This is about over 500 pastors. We campaign for Governor Dapo. We voted for him, yes. and he promised us yes. to give us dividend of democracy. Yes. One of it is that the road will be good. Yes. This Abadeo Okiaro road to Baga, yes. he has promised us. Yes. We came today for meeting, yes. and we decided yes. that today this road issue will be settled. Yes. Yes. Every demon on this road oh, yes. that said the road will not be constructed, yes. in the name of Jesus, back yes. out. Yes. Gentlemen, uh, well, it, isn't it funny that we now have to start praying so uh, our leaders can begin to rehabilitate roads? roads. Honestly, I don't, um, I don't blame these pastors. I live in the area, and um, the, from Tipa Garage in Akute, as after um, autumn. In fact, you start seeing real, you start going through pains mm. from autumn. You know, after, after Akute, right up to Agbado, the road is terrible. Terrible. People can't use their cars as much as they want. <clears throat> Okada riders make money off our people. We are not even talking about the inner roads. The inner roads from um, from the Lambe or Lambe Junction going inside to Matogun. People have contributed money on their own to compact the road, fill and compact the road so that it can be more tolerable. You will expect the government at some point will come to their aid, especially when you can see that they spent their money to compact the road. Well, that's not, that has not happened. Many of us believe that if a local government is too big, 
in some states, you will have at least three local governments out of it for local government. And I'm not exaggerating. So you expect that some of these burdens or uh, burden, some of the burden can be taken off the government by local governments where they are actually functioning. Because across our country, local governments are not doing enough. And it's difficult to blame them. Because some of their funds, it is governors that use some of their funds. That is the truth. Only very few governors don't touch local council funds. And they know it. They may fight over it. They may hit their heads against the wall over this. But that is the truth. That is the truth. The truth is by nature self-evident. So if you want to see real, real nightmare, move from Akute, go to Matogun, go through Okiaro, and then go and terminate your journey at Toyin, Toyin Street, which is in Lagos State. Some parts of the road that leads to Toyin itself is terrible, mm -hmm. and I expect that even the Lagos State government will have fixed some portions of that road. So I do not uh, blame, blame these pastors for going uh, to this land. They are trying to draw attention. They've done that in the past. It amounted yeah. to nothing. Remember what happened even uh, just before the election in Songo. Ogun State has some of the best roads in Nigeria, uh, worst roads in Nigeria. Lagos, when you go to the Kurodu area, you will know that Lagos also has some of the worst roads in our country. I think they will be competing with Niger State in terms of the deplorable state of, of roads, especially inner city roads. There is a need to address those problems. I know that Governor Abiodun inherited huge debt stock, but now that he's receiving a lot more, from the distributable revenue from the center, there is a need for him to address these problems. And the bridge that they are constructing in the Ojojo Abiodun area, that because it's an alternative road for those who do not want to go through Alagbole uh, to come to Baga, that alternative road needs to be completed. That, that bridge is taking too long to complete. We thought that before the end of December, the government would give it to us as a, a New Year gift. Yes. But it didn't happen. The road has been closed to traffic since. There is a need to show urgency. Before the rains come again, there is a need to expedite action. Let's not always focus on the urban centers. That's true. Because people live in these places and they pay their taxes. So there is a need to assist them and by fixing those roads so that they will be proud in their government. They, will, they, they too will feel that the government has not forgotten them. In places where people have no good roads at all, there is always that sense that, look, we have been abandoned. We don't matter to these people. So, Governor Dakwa Biodun, take this viral video, use it as a point of contact to reach the people and help them finish that road that uh, Amosun started and put so many needless bridges on it, making it to be so expensive that he couldn't complete it in his time. In some of those places, you don't need those bridges. Look at Arifanla in Akute. There is a bridge that they put there. Nobody needs that bridge, you know? And bridges make road works far more expensive the, you can actually build an estate, you know, at the cost of one bridge. Mm. So whatever the government will do, if you are going to bypass those bridges or redesign that road, you've got to, I mean, deliver that road right. in good time. All right, Sikhead, when you saw this video, what came to your mind? Laughable. <laughs> Laughable. You know, I was already laughing when I saw the video. And um, laughable that um, it has gotten to this point. 
This is not what happened on dark climbs. You don't see pastors, uh, clergymen in the United States, United Kingdom, or probably in some other countries, the real countries coming out to be praying that God should intervene, or even China, so that, that God should intervene so that they can have multiple roads. It is very laughable. You don't see that. It doesn't happen. It doesn't. God will not come down from heaven to come and construct truth for us now. It's not possible. God will not come and give us Bible uh, water. God will not come and construct hospitals for us. God will not come down and construct schools. God walks through men. And probably that is what they are, work, that they are talking about, that let the leaders who have been elected by them to be able to remember them. But it's so sad. And we have been on this issue for years now. I remember there was the, one of the episodes we had here that we are talking about uh, Amos. It was former governor Amos, uh, because if you remember vividly, mm. when he said he promised, I think it was one of his campaigns or whatever, he promised that he was going to fix, fix that road. At the, this is less than 40 kilometers. I think it's less than 40 kilometers. Mm -hmm. It's about 38, 37. 30, yeah. Maybe 32 or yeah, It's less than 40. And we've been on this for years. Uh, but the state government also blamed this delay on um, budget issues. And he also, so, also said... Uh, spike in cost of construction materials. Let me tell you, if we stick to plans, okay, if you stick to plan, mm. most, of, most of the variations, yes, comes, but it wouldn't meet you. Yes. Mm. Because on a yearly basis, there's, it happen, there's inflation. So what you do, what, what normal government or leaders do is that we give a time frame. You are going to ask the contractor, how many years will you take you to deliver on this road? Mm. Tell me the cost. And that is what uh, with all sense of it, that's what Mike was doing in, in River yes. States. That's what Mike was doing. He never he, abandoned He doesn't problem. abandon, he never abandoned yeah. any. He will stick to that plan. And to a larger extent, Lagos State too. If you see the successive governors in Lagos State, for goodness sake, um, the, what is this now? Um, what is this bridge? Um, just after Aogba, if you are going to, what's that place now? I've forgotten where. Is it Yanokwaja? That bridge. That's the bridge heading towards, you know, if you're taking Ogba, you want to, that is the bridge there that was started by the Ambody. Oh, so that, Pen Pen Cinema. Yes, Pen, that is Pen Cinema. That is the way I'm heading to. Pen Cinema. That bridge was started by um, Ambody. But you realize that it was someone who completed it. Yes, within a short time. Within a short time, mm -hmm. it was done and dusted. Look at also at other places, even in other roads. And the Ambody, same thing happened. Ambody started and completed the airport road. Yes, okay. leading from international, yes. leading from international to up to Oshodi. With all the bridges. With all the bridges. That is consistency. So that is what I said. When I, so when we talk about handover notes, I wonder what these governors take at handover notes. What the one that left, is it that you just have to start your own? You basically, most governors, I've seen one of the governors. Do most that is what I'm saying. I've seen some governors. What they do is that it's just like what is happening in Akwai Bomb State now. If you see the level of consistency in Akwai Bomb, and that is why Akwai Bomb is having a rapid growth. Whichever governor comes, who don't com continue from where Akwa Bio State, irrespective of the challenges they had, with personal challenges. It's not about personal challenges. He continued from where Akwa Bio State, and most of the roads and um, infrastructure that was started by Akwa Bio, he completed it. The guy there now, Umo Eno, he's doing the same thing that um, um, most of the jobs that were started by Emmanuel Odom. He's continuing with it. So that is so. Those are the issues. So this road should be a priority. Don't even think just, governors should be uh, should have projects that they can't complete. You should be able within a time frame. That's okay. what I was talking about. I have four frame. years. I have yeah. four years. Yeah. This road, I'll finish it in three years. Because the more you delay, the more the cost, cost. goes up. Yeah. And the variations come in. If, uh, if, if at the time Amazon started that road. What was the exchange rate? Look at where we are today. Yeah. At the time when he started that road, the exchange rate was not up to 200 it, it wasn't. naira to, uh, it wasn't. to a dollar. It wasn't. Today, we are struggling. You know, even despite the uh, recent uh, the recovery, little recovery of the naira, we are struggling between 1,300 to 1,400. So look at the huge difference. Mm -hmm. Well, you delay a project, you do not prioritize it. You know, time catches up with you. Mm -hmm. A new government comes, the government is grappling with its own peculiar challenges, and the road gets, the project gets delayed until it gets to a point that you can't finish it anymore. You now say, oh, 
Look at what look at what we are facing in that in that uh, uh, Lac Bole area. It's only one side of the of the road that vehicles are using. They tarred one side, right. left the other that place on tarred. We are using that one one part like that. Uh, but uh, just a bit, to defend the government, the government is urging citizens to please pay their taxes. Well, people have been paying their taxes. <laughs> people have been paying their taxes. And the question I've always asked, when governments say pay your taxes, the one they pay, what do they do with it? <laughs> that should be the issue now. They might not be paying as much as you expect, but people have been paying taxes for goodness sake. If you are working, especially those that are not, not in the private sector, even those in the private sector, at the end of the month, they do something from your salary. Yes. But that's the fact now. Because am I lying? Yeah. yeah. People are just paying now. They pay. Most, you are talking of taxes. All those women that you see that stay by those sites, they say, do you know that local government collect money from them to sell yeah, yeah, all those things? All those women. Those all those, yeah, those sites, do you know they collect money. money from them? That's true. Those are it's the efficiency of collection, collection that they should improve yeah, upon. Yes, that that's what Lagos has done. Yeah. Lagos has not increased, I mean, ta uh, taxes over the years. Yeah. Lagos has simply modernized and improved in the efficiency of collection. Of collection. Yeah. To make it difficult for you to escape. Mm -hmm. If you, have, you must pay, you pay. Yeah. Road users, you must pay. Yeah. So that is the thing. If we improve the efficiency of collection, you remove human interferences. Mm -hmm. Because human interferences allow so much corruption to take place. Mm -hmm. You remove the or reduce to the barest minimum human interferences. Mm -hmm. You will make more money. There are so many people who should be captured in the tax net who are not captured. captured. And All right, it's gentlemen. Not their fault. Uh, so our next topic is still about road rehabilitation, but this time in Ibadan, your state capital, southwest Nigeria, is most times plagued by traffic congestion. The reprieve has come the way of road users and residents of the city. The administration of Governor Shei Makinde has embarked on city junctions improvement projects to ensure the flow of traffic. Some of the projects executed by Governor Makinde in Ibado include the overhead bridge at Akobo and completion of Idiakwe Basharu, Akobo dual carriageway to the second gate of the second mechanized division of the Nigerian Army. The junction improvement works on Agodi Gates, Odife Road, were inaugurated on Friday, the 22nd of March. Thank you. You know, in 2019, Governor Shei Kinde showed himself to be a governor in a hurry to deliver on his mandate. At that time, it was Shei Kinde that everybody was talking about because he appeared to constitute a fresh breath of air. And people are praising him. Uh, this is the governor to beat and all that. Invariably, people like Governor Zulum came into the picture when he delivered um, mega schools within 100 days of his administration. And people started saying, ah, wow, this one, this one is a beast too. How do you deliver giant mega schools within 100 days. It's made a habit now. In 100 days, you will see numerous projects, things that others don't finish in years. That man in Bono State will deliver in 100 days to the point that even uh, Vice President Kashim Chetima was asking, are you saying you, you finish this hospital in 100 days? And he said, yes. You know, that is... Um, uh, by the by the way, the point that one is making is that governors who make their make up their minds to work for their people, they will work, and people will see what they are doing. No one in his right senses will look at even these pictures, these drone shots, and not say this is good, and not say this is evidence that someone is working, because you can see travel time will reduce drastically. When you expand the roads and you see the, the, the traffic signals, the signs are there, making it look like a really modern road. When we travel out of the country, we see these things. And it is possible to give our people this sort of a, um, 
dividends of democracy. You see, when I saw some of the roads, my mind went to the road construction that they flagged off, that Governor Shemak, they flagged off last Friday. 32 kilometers. That road is named after Senator Rashidi Adewo Lula Doja, you know, the big uh, political masquerade of Ibadan politics or your state politics because <laughs> once you take out <laughs> the um, the Ibadan votes, once you dominate the Ibadan votes, you have won the election because there are not less than 10 local governments. So that road terminates along the road that leads to Ife. What Mark Inde has done is what others before him didn't do to save people from wasting needless time okay. along the war road and the rest of them. Take them, if they have no business inside the city, take them outside the city through a circular road. That road is a circular road. It takes you all the way to Ife Road. You've cut out the bad on travel because whether you like it or not, because Ibadan is such a monstrous city in size, it is still unmatched in our country and in West Africa. If you are coming to Lagos, the time that you spend in Ibadan, in traffic gridlock, and you are calculating and you see that you spend more than one hour, you can't escape it. Either when you are going or when you are coming. So he's found a way now to build a circular road that will ease all of that pain, takes you out of the city takes you around. You are heading to uh, maybe Lesha or anywhere. Just you are just going on your way. You have no business, you know, getting into traffic at the war road and all that. And beyond that, he has also with this ju uh, junction uh, improvement works. Traffic around a war, a war road, um, Agodi Gate and all of that. Have, the, the travel time has reduced because the roads have been widened so people can move freely. And it's, it's a pleasurable ride now for, uh, for motorists, as you can even see in that uh, uh, video. So Civic Center, Idiakbe Junction, Agodi Gate, all of those places now, drivers are experiencing a new lease of life because the roads are wider and traffic is moving smoothly. It, it, it was painful when they were constructing these roads. It was painful. But you can see people are getting the dividends. And another thing, even people that they removed from the streets when they were constructing the roads, uh, okay. he has constructed 700. We're looking at the civic hmm? center, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's now they've constructed, I mean, 700 uh, lock up shops. For, for free, they are going to give those who used to trade by the roadside. This is good governance. It's not enough to just um, rob people of their means of livelihood. You have to provide alternatives to them. You don't want street trading because street trading clogs the, the, the road uh, and it even allows uh, crimes such as uh, um, uh, carjacking and others to take place. But now, the government is providing shops for them for free. Those that they are taking, are taking off this uh, Agodi Gate and all other areas. So, uh, providing um, local shops for free. So, I can only commend this governor for the work that he has started. I can't wait for that Rashidi Adeo or Lusaikula Road to be completed because for us who use this road going to our own. Uh, Towns and all that, that nightmare, especially during festive seasons, when the road gets blocked, challenge will be blocked, the whole road will be blocked. Mm. We know now that once that road is completed, that circular road, it takes us away from the regular nightmare on those highways. So kudos to Engineer Shima Kinde for that thoughtfulness of coming up with this uh, idea, which will definitely change the face of Ibadan. All right, Sikian. Uh, if you even consider 
how the metro area population of Ibadan continues to expand or increase massively. This is a good step in the right direction. Yes, you know, when we were growing up in primary school, we had, when you asked, one of the questions you asked uh, during the European Free and Government, which is the largest city in West Africa. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you remember. <laughs> because remember that. There are songs now. Yes, now. There are songs. They used to sing. Yes, you know. Ibadan is the largest. Yes. Ibadan is the largest. Ibadan is large. I know this very well because for four years I, was, I lived in Ibadan during my uh, law program. And I know that Ibadan is a very, very big city, very, very large cosmopolitan. Um, but to a large extent, I think successful government in uh, Ibadan to a large extent, I've also been able to do site, especially in the area of roads. You can also give it to late Akala, Alaw Akala, um, the former governor of, um, um, of um, Oyo State. He did some road. In fact, there is a particular road. If as you are entering Ibadan, if you get to that after the uh, toll gates, as you are entering to your right is Lee City University. You have a turning that leads you to challenge. Then the other side is Elebu. There is a road that is called Elebu. That is now has been renamed Alawa Kala Road. If you see what they've done on that road, you think that is a road that you see in Abuja and uh, or Lagos. Fantastic. Well, well tired. They've put uh, street lights. I think it started before uh, the current governor. But you will see that it takes you straight to the end of that road. That will now lead you to um, Abekuta, one particular road that leads you to Abekuta and the rest of them. You, you come to see that from Ibadan to Abekuta, from, from that as it takes you just about one hour. No. Then also the inner road. What I have always said is that governor, good governance, has no political colors. You don't have to be in APC or PDP or SDP or Labour Party. Uh, it has no, a good a good leader is a good leader. Put him in, in, in anywhere, he will deliver. What Shein Maki did is, he, he, at the point, he was also being started as a Mr. Project, just like during the days of week and the rest of them. But not just him. Go to Abia. Something is happening in Abia presently. The current governor of Abia, Governor if you see what that man is doing in the state. I'm not from Abia. I'm from Imo State. But I've seen some touches. In fact, there's a road. The, the, uh, part of the problem that Abia has always had if you, from entry from the Imo State as it is that very narrow road leading into. In fact, when, when you enter Umaya before, it's like a to me it's a glory, it was a glorified village. Umaya, the capital city of um, Abia State. Abia State. But you mean this man came? When you think that there won't be road, he has been able to expand that road. There. If you're coming in, dualize it. Um, um, houses were demolished, and what I heard was that. He made sure that he paid compensation to everybody whose house was there. Because that is always the problem. They come, demolish your house, and say they will compensate you. Know what? He, he made sure that he compensated all of them and reconstructed that place, if you see that. that so it is good governance. And go Governor Shea Mackinde is it's not only in road. There are also basic infrastructure that if you go to your state, the your state that was about, the bad, let's say even, uh, let me not say your state, let me say the bad that I knew. In bad that was about four years. The bad I met four years is different from what I'm seeing now. The, the, and, the governor is also talking about uh, the first major international uh, tourism summit. If you talk of or your state, let's talk of Ibadu. We need to know the history of Ibadu. The first television in Africa was where? It's not Ibadu. It was Ibadu now. The first university in West Africa, was it even, uh, yes, in West Africa or Nigeria, UI, it wasn't bad now. The highest, highest, the most, in those days, the highest story building in the whole of uh, Nigeria or West Africa was Koko House in Ibadan. Mm -hmm. And you have always known that Ibadan has been the seat of power for the Southwest in those days, mm -hmm. the days of fashion group and the rest of them. So Ibadan is what, Ibadan is what Kaduna is for most part of the north is for what Enugu right. is for Southeast. But the fact that I say is what I'm trying to say in essence is that Governor Mackinde is the, he's a member of PDP. He's not APC. He's not a, the fact is that when you have leadership, just like what the man in Bonu is doing, fantastic, despite the fact that you have a whole lot of challenges in terms of security in Bonu State. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Bonu State and the kind of school that this man builds, you, you continue to ask how much do you get from IGR, from federal government, everybody. Uh, no, sorry, you get from federal um, coffers every month. But no states receive one of the lowest in terms of, um, um, uh, in terms of um, money that comes from the center. But you see what the governor is doing. But there are some states that cannot even, some states that receive uh, within the top three, they cannot even pay salaries. 
And is that, is, 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 is that not funny? There are some states, if you look at the papers today, there are some states, I don't want to mention their name. There are some states that are within the front five, within the, in terms of what they receive from Abuja, every month, but they can't still pay that, just minimum wage of 30,000 naira. It's very annoying. All right, gentlemen. Uh, let's move on to some political issues. The immediate past governor of Kaduna State, Marlon Nasir El Rufa, is a man that is never far from grabbing the headlines for various reasons. After a high test following the completion of his two terms as a governor, the enigmatic Malam is at it again. The former governor sparked criticisms and insinuations of jumping ship when he met with the national chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Sheo Gabam, at the party's secretariat in Abuja. But El Rufai said he's not planning to dump the ruling All Progressives Congress APC. His spokesman, Mwiwa Adeke, explained that the meeting was to uh, return a visit to Gabam, who visited El Rafai for Iftar on the 19th of March. Okay, uh, Sikye, where is the speculation coming from? Uh, well, <laughs> I, you know, before now, um, word out there was that El Rafai and uh, his longtime friend, the National Security Advisor, Nori Badu, had parted ways. In fact, some people were speculating that Ribadu was behind um, the idea of Nori Badu being dropped as a minister. He would have been uh, uh, Minister of Petroleum Resources. That was the plan, but things changed and it was uh, dropped after a petition um, got to the National Assembly, you know, at the time when they were being screened. So it was a massive shock to people in the know of the, the disagreement between Nuri Badu and Erufai to see them together. So that led to all kinds of speculations because both men can pretend that they had issues. There is no way a no ribadu in this season of fasting will say that he, he didn't have his issues before and after Erufai's nomination as minister. Mm. He cannot deny that as a Muslim. But somehow, I guess some of their friends reached out to them and against all expectations, we saw the two men together. That's the power of friendship. People who had been friends for many years. Politics and hunger for power should not split them. If we allow politics and hunger for power to split them, and combust a friendship of several decades, then something is wrong with both of them. Now they came together, of course, people were shocked and it triggered some insinuations that, oh, Erufa is already thinking of 2027. Then Sheu Gabam, the um, national chairman of SDP, went to Erufai's house, visited him, and they had Ifta together. Erufai felt the need to reciprocate that visit, to avenge that visit, avenge in inverted commas. But he went to the Secretariat of the SDP. Once you go to the sector of the political party, it will trigger all kinds of uh, insinuations that uh, maybe he's already looking at uh, the SDP as um, uh, a platform that he can use to actualize his uh, ambition to be president. But the truth is, Erufai never told anyone that he was going to dump the P APC. He never told anyone that he was going to contest for the presidency 
of uh, Nigeria. In fact, he told some of his friends that he didn't want to be minister. You know, that he just felt like going to rest and all that. Um, it's hard to combine this with his academic pursuits abroad. So people are free to speculate about his future, his political future. But what I see that has happened is some people came in and resolved the dispute between him and his longtime friend. Because I've always seen the three of them, the former Emir of Kano, Nuri Badu, and Erufai as very good friends. I, I couldn't believe it that anything could uh, actually come in between them to the point that they will now, even their friends, will now, some of their friends will be abusing Nuri Badu and all that. So, but uh, it looks now, it looks like they sorted out their issues. I think it's good for them. And I'm happy that Malam has said, look, you don't have to see politics in everything. Mm -hmm. I have no plan to leave the APC. I have no plan to contest. And I also think that it's a tad too early to start talking about 2027. Even the government in power has not been in, in power for over a year. We still have some months to go. So for me, it's just um, what the uh, speculators have done amounts to making a mountain out of a molehill. Gabam, the SDP man, is my friend. I know that he has friends across political parties. And if your friends can't visit you, then it's terrible. It's terrible. If your friends can't visit you without people thinking that they want to defect to your party, then it's wrong. Erufai has no, uh, I think he has no plan to leave the APC for now. At least I want to believe him. I want to be, I'm not saying he will, he will never leave, but I want to believe that. He has no plan to leave for now. Okay. People are just speculating. So continue from where the chaos stops. Um, so people have said Arifa is not even that kind of politician that would start playing hide and seek because he, because he wants to jump ship. Yes. Um, let me start from the point that most often they are not, I don't believe politicians. I have my reservation. Yeah, that's there. Yes, that is there. You have a point. I ha politicians. Not the type that we have in Nigeria. Everywhere in the world, not just the politicians, but the type that we have in Nigeria. Look, I don't, I, most of the time, I don't believe them. When they tell you this, you better take your time. Because they also talked about his visitation to Abduningi's... Uh... No, he, he visited Abduningi, but the fact remains that Erufai is somebody that speaks his mind. There are, three of, there are about three or four of them within that as is, that does that. One is Nasir Erufai. The second one is the former Emir of Khan, Sanusi. The third one is the one that also um, uh, Biko have mentioned, Nuhuri Badu. And before them, more like an elder brother, is somebody called one Major Omar. In fact, you can add the fifth one to the miss. There's a cardinal, uh, uh, former senator, Sani. I think Sani is his name. Mm -hmm. former Sani, uh, I think Sani. Sani. Yes, Sheikh Sani. Those guys, within those, about five of them, at any given point in time, they will tell you where they belong to on issues. They're not minding whose us is God. Erufai is one of them. And if you look at, if you look at the role Erufai played in the, during the election, especially when he came to the issue of um, power shifting from the north to the south, he was the arrowhead, if you remember vividly. And he came up with, even when his fellow governors were being skeptical and being political about it, he came out straight and said, this team must go to the south. That is the kind of person he is. So, but my little challenge here is that he visited his friend, who is the uh, SDP chairman, in his house. And his, uh, his friend visited him in his house. But when he wants to revisit, he went to his house. So what do you expect? <laughs> they, we have a saying in our place that ah, when the, this thing cry in the night, and picking die for money. Who go talk to be the wish? So I don't know, but I believe that Erufai as a person is still studying. Because even the speech, there was a point that 
part of the statement we had that there was a video that was there, and they were saying, oh, don't video it. We don't want it. You say he doesn't care. Yeah. I'm sure you, you yeah. saw that. You say, I don't care whether they show it or not or whatever. And whatever. But the fact remains that most often they are not. I find it difficult when some politicians are of course, after all, Erifai was in PDP before. Now, we forget he was, an, he was in PDP before he came to APC. So anything can happen. But if he comes out to say there is nothing to it, let us take it for this words that it is just a mere visit. But I hope it doesn't go beyond that in the months to come. But, but Biko, do you think if Erifai decides to leave APC today, is that a, a journey to political oblivion? Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say that. I, it's not. Um, it's not that sort of person who will be jumping from political party to political party. There are some people who do not believe in moving from party to party, and he's a man who speaks his mind all the time. So I believe that if he wanted to live, he would. He would live, and he would damn the consequences, but what we see clearly is, one, is to early, if this was a year to election, maybe I won't talk like this, but it's too early, and when you want to take a decision like this, you have to bear everything in mind. It's too early to jump ship, the elections are still far away. If indeed he has um, an interest in the 2027 election, it's too early now to say it's jumping ship because we have to wait for certain things to pan out. And he's someone who is very calculating, he's cerebral, uh, he weighs his actions very well before taking them, and, and he usually does not regret his actions. So I don't think. Um, there's any need for the for some of the analysis that people are making, for some of the speculative uh, write-ups that people are making over a mere visit uh, to Gabam. Uh, you know, anybody can, and Gabam even said right there that this time we should all come together to solve the nation's problems. You know, across party uh, divides. And when you listen to Gabam himself, you will know that this is a patriot, someone who wants the best for his country. He doesn't speak like, oh, I'm not in the ruling party. If uh, the ruling party, will, uh, if Nigeria will collapse on the head of the ruling party and the rest of us, it doesn't matter. That's not the, the kind of person that Sheikh Gabam is. And um, I believe that it was just a case. You know, Malam had not been around for a long time, was abroad. I believe that this was just a way of um, uh, linking up with old friends and all that, because no one can deny that Sheo Gabam is his friend. People have friends across political parties, and there's no big deal in linking up with your friend. And that's what, and they should not forget that it was Gabam that visited him first, and then he returned the visit. So uh, it's just the Muiwa Deke, the spokesman, has explained that look, this has nothing to do with politics. All right. And I believe them. I believe them. Let's wait and see. Let's go to Ekiti yeah. State, where accolades and applause continue to pour in for the governor of Ekiti State, Biodun Oyebanji, for his brand of governance in the Southwest State. This time, the State House of Assembly has commended the governor for implementing policies that provide care for pensioners senior citizens and public servants across the state. The minority leader of the House and chairman of the Committee on Public Service Matters, Establishments and the Human Capital Development, Oladile Ogunshaki, gave this commendation during a two-day oversight to ministries, departments, agencies and commissions in the state. Ogunshaki said various interventions of the administration of Governor Yebanji have positively impacted people's lives, particularly public servants and pensioners. Sikien. How impressed are you? I'm impressed um, because um, I've always said time with a number that any government that not be able to take care of um, its um, ex workers as it is, or those um, um, the older people, um, is not what it's all because you also will retire one day. And what you retire, what happens to you? Mm. We have seen successive governments at the state and federal government level 
um, that don't pay, uh, don't pay pensioners. Some of them will come out in the cold, will come out in, under the sun, line up, stay for, for hours just for them to get their pension, mm -hmm. and nothing comes. And when you ask yourself how much is the pension, some of them receive as little as 20,000 naira, 15,000 naira. In fact, that was the time that was so terrible when I was staying in Abuja that within the zone three, zone four area of Wuse, where you had the military pension, and, then, and you see some people, some air soldiers, they will come with their mats, come with pillows, mm. and they lie down the street. Some stay there for weeks. Mm. Stay there for weeks. Uh, ex military men at that zone, I, I think they moved that office. But it was, it was a total eyesore. And you just, you see some of these men just say, say they were going, going around, going around begging for arms, begging for people to give them food. These were retired soldiers, retired Air Force uh, um, individual, retired um, um, uh, Navy, uh, naval officer. And you ask yourself, what is happening? What is happening? How much is the money of it? So we, and they will tell them to come for verification. They come and um, verification upon verification and verification. I'm sure you've seen that, even in several states. And most of these state gov um, governors just think that they are doing some them a word of good by paying pension. It is their entitlement. It is their entitlement. So we come and say, oh, they will come and post. Uh, we've cleared an arrears of three months, still remaining nine months. And they ask, oh, what, is, what is wrong with them? And most often they know, you know the challenge is there? Because some of those working now, when they see what happened to those before them, that is where corruption starts. They want to grab as much as they can because they know that they at the end of it, and when they retire, nothing comes to them. Mm. So this governor should be commended for doing this. And I hope that other governors will also follow. If you look at, I'm telling you, out of the 36 state, 30 state governors that we have, or states that we have, I will tell you that I don't think that we have up to 10 states that have followed through mm. the payment of pension. And it's bad. Sad. Somebody will work if our one governor said uh, 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 people who are alive have not been paid, the dead are asking for money. Can you imagine that? It's already, it was already referring to, to those them, elderly the, people, the, 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 the people as the dead. As the dead. It's, it's a, a former Southwest can governor. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? No. This is somebody that has... So they don't prioritize they don't priority to this. payment of pension. Yes. So if there's a governor who is prioritizing payment of pension, that governor has to be commended. Yes. One of the first things that uh, uh, Senator Obasan, the governor of Kaduna State, did was to clear pension areas. You know, when he came in to office, that first month, according to him, you even had to take a loan to pay salaries. But once subsidy was removed, what they used to get went up significantly. You know, one, we are going to do a program in which, during the, in the course of this week, we are going to tell Nigerians how much each of their governors now collects based on the, the, last uh, the fact years. figures of February, mm -hmm. so that Nigerians will know, mm -hmm. we will know the state that mm -hmm. collects the most money, mm -hmm. those, the state that today, Kitty State, collects the least. Mm. The Kuti State collects the least, a, a little over six billion. That's what the Kuti State collects. The, the, the lowest in the country. The Yet, the highest. in terms, we are talking about welfare mm -hmm. of um, pensioners. The governor is being is being praised, and he's also talking about reviewing it because it's you know it's even in uh, even the schools. Is already now increasing the subvention to states. He has conscience. He cannot look at what he's collecting now that is higher than what he used to get and not think of what he can do, you know, by way of making life better for the people. The poorest of the poor amongst us, the pensioners that we don't remember. We are struggling, some are struggling to some governors. Do you know that even contributing pension, there were some governors mm. who were not. Uh, paying their own part mm -hmm. of the contributory uh, uh, pension thing. Mm -hmm. Yet, deductions made by civil servants, you collect it. Mm -hmm. But your own side of the bargain, you don't pay. In this same Southwest, there was a governor who was doing that. We had all kinds of governors in this area. So, 
for me, if a governor is doing what uh, Governor Ebanji is doing, he has to be commended. His style of leadership is completely different to previous governors. I've said on this pro program before that he combines the qualities of Fayoshe with the qualities of Oni. Fayoshe, in terms of his swashbuckling style, he will inspect projects even in the dead of night. Fayoshe can sit with the poorest of the poor and they will be eating on the same table. He had that quality. This, this current governor of Ekiti has that quality too. He sits even at ward meetings, his own ward. He goes to meet with the people. So the way he moves around, and then when it comes to taking care of workers, Oni is one governor, you know, although his period was short-lived, but Oni was a governor. Till tomorrow, civil servants still love Oni. So you see what Bao is doing now, what the Governor Ibanji is doing now, is fusing the qualities of Fayoshi, the character of Fayoshi, with the character of Shegoni. At the end of the day, you have a governor that virtually everybody is happy with him. All of the key political figures in rival parties, he has gone to meet them. And everybody is saying, you are doing well, you are doing well. If they are not careful, it will turn a Kitty state to a one party state. Because it's difficult to even see those who are who are even against him now. It will turn a Kitty to a one party state because some of the big opposition elements, some of the tough critics that we used to hear about in that state, some of them, he has visited some of them, and they have positive things to say about him. That means that he is doing well. Remember when he went to greet his principal? How many of these people even remember their humble beginnings? He went to the home of his principal and prostrated. When he saw Baba Febaola, he prostrated. You know, so some those things, those some of the things that he's doing sit well with our people. No doubt about it. And I can tell you he's a politician to watch. Given his nature, he seems to know what people want and he's giving it to them. Look at his elaborate interventionist programs. You saw it, they showed yes. it a while ago. Mm. He wants to touch every sector, yet it is still the state that collects the least. But there's a governor in Ekiti who is making impact that even his tough en toughest enemies cannot deny. That's what governance is about. Reach everybody in little ways. Reach everybody in little ways. And you'll be able to sleep like a man who has conscience. You'll be able to sleep and say, God, I'm doing my best. So even the fear of God is a quality that our leaders should have. It's easy to know a leader who does not fear God. Because a leader who does not fear God will simply not care about the people. Whatever the people say, he doesn't care. He will think only about himself. Because that Nebuchadnezzar spirit in him will tell him that beyond my family nobody else matters and that has to change Sikim, before yeah. we move on uh, okay you know um you can give it to this governor because if you also know the the debts he inherited as a governor that you'll be shocked in terms of uh, outstanding salaries, gratuities, and the rest of them. And one thing I've also noted about him is like somebody that does not believe in gigantic projects. He go for those projects that touches the life of the people. That was a former governor in that state. They already, two days before he left, they already commissioned an airport. I don't know, BK, yeah, I don't know whether the airport is, uh, you know, you fly to Ikita, you go to Ikita. I don't know whether that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they ask. They stop you, make me. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and hurriedly. If and, the airport is not ready. Yes. And you can imagine. And you know why I'm. Um, uh, a military aircraft that landed there. Then you know why I mentioned that is that that is shows you governance. It's not a governance of, uh, of the seats. You don't have to have a governance. Because the impression we were giving was that that airport was ready. 
and somebody no, was no, sleeping. No, no, not ready. And it was not ready, just um, yeah, a people, bit. People also, it's not the first person to uh -uh. Let us open uh, a uh, project uh, that he knew uh, was not ready. Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. Uh, so, uh, because we may leave those ones. We are talking of a kitty. Let, let us focus on this particular. What I'm saying in essence is that you have seen, you see, and how many years have you been in office? And what I've always said, just as I was saying before, it's not how many years you stay. It's not the political party. It's, impact. You know, it's the impact you've made. What was your impact? There are one or two governors uh, since 1999 that if you anywhere, they raise up their head. That used to, let me tell you, let me give you a critical uh, uh, example. The former governor of my state, he must, there's a man called Sam Mbakwe. I'm sure he must have his name. Mm -hmm. PK know the, who knows that man very well. He was the governor of Imo State between 1979 and 1983, down 84 before that governor. I will tell you, most of the major infrastructures in current Imo State, Abia State, and a little part of Ipo State was done by them. He was called a crying governor. Yes. He was the only go he was the Imo State was the first state in this country to build an airport. State, I mean state, by the people, not that the one that the federal government built of it. In those days, when I was very small, I was in primary school, they used to say there's nothing too small for Imo Airport. Mm. And you go and say, name them, Concord Hotel, this one, this one, in Imo State. Nobody has matched the legacy of that man in both Imo and Abia State. And it's over 40 years now. If you mention anything and you say, Samun Bakwe, even the older, the youngest of yours will be. That is what I was talking about. Look at Obafemi Awolawo. Obafemi Awolawo was not the president of Nigeria. He was, he was a governor of the, um, what do you call it then? South, what was South West called then? Uh, uh, Premier of, Premier of South, West uh, yes, West Western region. Today, when you mention Obafemi Awolawo, especially the South, Southwest, education, housing, that, that, let, me, let, let me bring it to him. There was also a governor in Lagos State, that is Jacond. So many people that say are whatever they are today, especially those that were in Lagos houses, that went to school are now big men, governors, and the rest of them. They wouldn't have had the privilege of going to school. Mm -hmm. Not for the pre education of Obafemi and Wolowo, and also Jack Conde, especially in the Southwest. These are the people that are oppressing us today. Most of them went to free, free schools, mm -hmm. secondary school. Their parents couldn't afford it. So, what I'm saying is, is it is not how long, it's not how, uh, for how long, and bring it home finally. How much is it getting for the federal coffers? That's some, I've said it before, and I'm repeating it again, that in today's paper, in fact, in the punch, go and check today's punch, there is a state that is the number, I think, number three, within the of receiving in the South South, that receives so much for the federal government. They have not been able to pay, they are not paying 30,000 naira minimum wage. And now, NSC is saying that they want 1 million. They want half a, if a state cannot pay 30,000 as minimum wage, how will you be able to pay 500,000? So this governor should be commended. And others should look at what he's doing and do the same. Why I'm saying so is that if you are so rich, you are a governor, already, is everybody in your family, in, in your village rich? <laughs> yes, now. There are people that work, that also uh, that will benefit from that pension. The prayers of these old people will go in a long way in living. So I, I totally commend that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's something that is very private. It's not something that we're just saying for the purpose. Thank you. Any final word on this? Mm -hmm. All right. So, gentlemen, let's go on a break. And when we come back, we will move on to other matters. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is Journalist Hangout on Sunday, and I have been speaking, hanging out with Babaji De Koladi Otitoju and Chris Kendi Uwandu. We're still in Ekiti State as the state is regarded as the hub of intellectuals. So outburst over disagreements on programs and policies will be a past time for the people. The immediate past governor of the state, Kayo Defiame, has criticized a legal icon and senior advocate of Nigeria, SEN. Are Afeba Malola for saying previous governors of the state abandoned the vision of those who labored for its creation. Paimi said Babalola is partisan in his review of his administration 
as the 94-year-old lawyer has not been his supporter, even during his terms as the governor of the state. He added that the view of the respected lawyer cannot be the yardstick to measure his performance and those of others who served as the state governors. We kill. Kick off with this. Uh, where do you stand? Hmm. I honestly do not support abusing elders, especially a legend in the mold of um, Baba Afe Babaola. It's been such a tremendous success in so many areas. You can see even when he moved into uh, education philanthropy, he's made a success of it. He's, he's, um, his university is uh, clearly one of the best three private universities in Nigeria today. Uh, he was one of those who pushed hard for the creation of a Kitty State, where Faimi was privileged to become a governor. But I've always disagreed with people who simply say, oh, that governor didn't do anything. As someone who travels a lot within our country, I've seen governors that they told me were failures, didn't do anything, who turned out by my assessment to be good governors in terms of what they've done. Some people do not even try to do any form of critical assessment. They will just conclude that he has not done anything, he's a failure. You cannot say Fao she didn't do anything. Before Fao she, there was nothing like a dual carriageway in the whole of Ekiti. No dual carriageway. It was Fao she that kick-started dual carriageway before he was illegally impeached in 2006. He had gone far with the uh, dual carriageway. And the next administration eventually um, completed those dual carriageways. Before Fire said there was no overhead bridge in Ekiti. Today they have an overhead bridge. You can't say it didn't do anything. It's impossible for a governor to be in office for four years and you will say it didn't do anything. But maybe they didn't do enough. No, who's, who, by, by whose assessment? A lot of these remarks are usually influenced by politics. Yeah. I've had friends who said, what did Tinobu do in Lagos? I've had friends. Today, some of them say, no, he didn't do anything. It was Fashola that did all the work. <laughs> yes, they say that. Many of them don't know that it was actually Tinobu that brought BRT to Lagos. They give the credit to someone else. When you don't even have sufficient knowledge about the people that we are talking about, you conclude that they didn't do anything. So I disagree with Baba, Afebe Allah, who said, he didn't mention names, mm -hmm. but he concluded that others didn't do anything. No matter how you feel about the man who is there now, there is no gain in diminishing those who are there before him. We are happy. We told Ebanji, Ebanji in public prostrated Ubaba Not many governors will do that because they see themselves as the repository of the respect of their states. I may not want to go to that extent. But this one is anomaly personified. The way he does his things, others will see it as unorthodox. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that the people before him never did anything. We talk about social welfare scheme in our country. Some states are doing it now. Even the conditional cash transfer. Who started it? It was, it was a Faimi that started doing his first time. In fact, on the first day, on the day he was sworn in, it was Faimi. On the day he was sworn in, he announced it. Right? On the day he was sworn in in 2010, he announced that 
cash transfer for the poor, the widows, and all that. So people, you can't just dismiss people that they didn't do anything. Now, um, Fahemi said he does not like uh, talking down on elders, but some of what he said here, you give it to him, he has a way with the English language. He speaks language as if his uh, grandfather invented the language. But some of what he said, <laughs> I doubt if you can say that you have not, <laughs> that uh, he said um, um, about like suffering from a narcissistic personality <laughs> disorder. <laughs> Fire me. Fire me. Was Fire me that said it? Yes, now we are talking about Fire me. What is it? I don't think Fire has responded yet. Leave, uh, we are not talking about Fire me now. Fire me also said it is important for people to know that this is malicious and not a dispassionate and objective assessment. He also said uh, Babaola is an old man and one should grant him the indulgence of failing memory that comes with age. You see, when you say all that, and you said you don't want to abuse an old man, <laughs> what is it that you have, have done? You done? <laughs> One thing that we cannot deny is the fact that there were issues between them. And if you are not happy with an individual, it colors your judgment. That is the thing. It colors your judgment. It, it, you won't be able to assess that person dispassionately. One, Fahemi said Shegmoni was Baba Febawa's last candidate in 2007. That election was massively rigged in favor of Shegmoni. Fahemi took back his mandate in 2010. Baba Febawa was Shegmoni's lawyer. So he kind of explained why it will be difficult for anyone to expect Baba to objective in analyzing him. He also talked about the, you know, even the land on which Baba Febola's uh, university was built was given to him by Shegoni. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, when you Tie everything with the, everybody with the same brush, and you say all governors before Oyebanji didn't live up to the vision of the elders. The same Shegoni that you supported in 2007, that gave you the land on which you built that school, you have already categorized him among those failures. Mm. Maybe, that was Maybe why without I knowing it. Eh? Maybe that was why I didn't mention. No, when you so say everybody before. He uh, knows that that one would know that he has added him now. You don't have to mention. If I say uh, everybody in this room is a fool, will CKN <laughs> say that it's not one of them? If I go behind and tell him, you're not a you're not a You, I say everybody in this uh, studio, including the, the cameraman, cameraman uh, 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 he's he also a fool. <laughs> That's the way it is. You cannot say then. The, there was something that uh, Baba, I mean, that uh, Kaude Fahemi also said. He mentioned that when they were going to build the airport, airport. Baba wanted the airport, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. That, because students, you know, that airport is not far from the school. The students will have benefited a lot more from it than others. So he said when they wanted to build the airport, Baba said, ah, let me build the terminal building so that it can be named after me. Mm -hmm. He said he explained to him that, look, we signed a bond, and part of it includes the, that uh, terminal building. We cannot, there is no way we can um, allow you to build the terminal because it's part of the bond that we signed with the white people. He said Baba was not happy about that. He then suggested to him that he could build the airport you know, and have it named after, I think, in the end, I think he agreed to build, I mean, the car park, he agreed to build the car park. The point that I'm making is 
every time Baba speaks in this manner, Fire me, who is the first governor in the Kitty State history to actually successfully install a successor, believes that they are referring to him. The Yorubas will say, Tobanko wefwe, wamo. If I'm using a mustache now, in this studio I sit here, and I use mustache to uh, do parable, there's no way that uh, uh, CK will not know that I'm referring to him. That's true. Because you, you don't have mustache. <laughs> so yeah. I think he always feels that this Baba, <clears throat> that That's those, uh, and it's like he had been patient for too long. He then said, I will not take it anymore. I will not allow him to con con continue to control this narrative. But in my view, there is no need for this. Every governor will play his part. Every governor will play his part. And it's even difficult to compare governors because the circumstances are yes. usually different. Look at Baba Konde, for example, when he was governor. He didn't have the resources that governors have today. He didn't have it. Mm. Yet some of what he did, including the secretariat in uh, uh, Washington State, is there for all to see. They kicked him out of office. They didn't like him because he was not sharing money. So when we compare governors, compare leaders, we have to, we must try our best to be objective because the circumstances are usually not the same. the same. And as I said earlier, I do not agree that all those governors were failures. All right. Sikian, mm. is this a malicious assessment for you? Personally, I believe and uh, left to me as a leader, I, I don't expect former governor fire me to reply and that statesman uh, after Baba Lola. Personally, that is me. There's no controversy. There's no need. Even if he said all the governors in the former governor fire me, it's not the only former governor of a state. Yeah, he may be aggrieved. And based on some of the issues he has raised, he felt that this is a bit political and um, that the man um, never liked him. Mm. Even when as a governor, that he, he supported his opponent, uh, former governor Ni. He was a counselor to former governor and the rest of the. But he said the man did not specify. If he had said um, um, former governor Fire Me did not do anything, then you can take him on one on one. This is a 94 year old man. And this is not the first time I've ever is talking. It's not just about Ekiti State, even Nigeria generally. You've seen once in a while. Um, talking about issues, controversial, raising controversial issues as in, within the politics, but it's, it's like um, former President Olusha Gwan Basanjo <laughs> standing and saying something that you say you are replying of. Most often they are not. Baba has been writing letters, and you see some, where those letters are going to show. Reply, yes. People reply. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. No. In fact, no, those that, Baba has stepped there. Those that were replying, the former government, every time Baba wrote a letter, they replied him. But I don't think that if Baba writes a letter immediately, about the current government. I doubt if... Uh, we get if we can, people like, if, if he tries to write a letter, uh, you think people like Baron Anuga will leave him alone? Uh, probably. They won't but, leave but, him but, alone yeah. because they know he's an opinion yeah. holder. Yeah, so, but... And they will influence opinion. I agree. But the fact, what I'm saying, in a sense, is that Baba has stated what he said. But something you cannot take away from him, and that is where I want us. Let us leave the messenger and go for the message. He's talking about infrastructure. He's talking about this. The fact is that you cannot take away what him, as a 94-year-old man, has done in the kit. It's verifiable. One of the best private universities in Nigeria is in the kit. He could have taken that to, he could have brought it to Lagos. Yes, where I think he can probably make more money. It's possible. After Babala, after Babala teaching hospital, is one of the best in the country presently. In terms of repairs, are very good in medical. I'm telling you, in terms of medical, he's one of the best. And the funniest part is that this is a man that made his name in law. His law faculty, mm. I read law, and I know what most of the faculties in Nigerian universities. His law faculty is one of the best in the country presently. At the law school, if you look at graduates from Afebola, their performance at the law school 
you can't, you, you can't. So what I'm saying is, is, he himself can say, oh, you are okay. If you say you have done, show me one what class hospital that you built as a governor of a state. Those, those are verifiable. You know what I'm saying? So that is why I said, this is just not, absolutely not. But is it what um, a former governor is what you call a work on journalism right of reply. Mm -hmm. So he has given his right of right. reply and he has made the, um, this, whether Baba will now reply him again, no, is just what, but I don't think that this is, all this is just necessary. All right, gentlemen. Maybe the, um, it will end at this point. That is what I'm I saying. I also right. think that, you know, um, Prime Minister strategy, a strategist, is um, very solid in war strategies and all that. He must have done this as a deterrence so that the old man doesn't continue to say it. Because he said this is not the first time. And he believes that he is the target of this brickbat. Remember, Fayoshi being impeached during his first term illegally. Mm -hmm. Baba Afebola was part of those who instigated that impeachment. Impeachment of Fayoshi? Yes. By the time Fayoshi came back during the second time, they became friends. They became close to the man. Fayemi was also claiming that Baba was one of those who petitioned the EFCC to say that there was no airport. And then the EFCC invited him. <laughs> so this is a conflict between two men. Some of the issues involved we may not even know. Because five, five minutes since he left office, had, he, he's hardly talked. Yeah. So for him to have come out in this manner and with this level of anger, I believe that may, maybe that TFCC matter. matter. Or for him to have said Abba was one of those who wrote the petition, mm -hmm. maybe he has proof. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> these issues, the two of them understand these issues better than us. But... I, 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 if I were in his shoes, I may not bother to reply, yeah, nice. honestly. Yeah. I would just leave him, but yeah. maybe he's been pushed to the wall. Maybe he did it to stop him mm -hmm. from coming. All right, gentlemen, let's move on. Uh, the last appearance of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPEB, Namdekanu, for continuation of his trial for alleged treason was like no other before. Kanu, who used this opportunity to speak about his continued detention, trial, and health, boasted that he has the capacity to end insecurity in the southeast within two minutes if he is freed. He said some officials are behind the insecurity in the region because they're making money from the situation. Kanu added that those carrying out attacks in the southeast in the name of IPOB are criminals. Before we discuss uh, this matter, let's share the story by TVC News Judiciary Correspondent in the scenario to speak with the IPOB leader with you. Mr. Kano prayed the court to remand him at the Kujay Correctional Facility or place him on house arrest. Justice Binta Yanko said she will not grant any order transferring him to the correctional facility as there are more than 15 defendants with terrorism charges in Kujay Correctional Facility that have escaped from the facility. Also reacting to the ruling, counsel to Mr. Kano, Aloy Ejimako held that they cannot go on with the proceedings as they have not been given any opportunity to speak with their client. He noted that it has been very difficult to have a meeting with Mr. Kano in the custody of the DSS as their conversations with him is always been monitored and Mr. Kano is still wearing the same outfit which the court ordered to be changed. He alleged conspiracy going on in the court, which is against the constitution, and team of lawyers representing Mr. Kano is not pleased. Justice Inyanku told Mr. Kano and his lawyers to put their grievances through appropriate applications. Mr. Kano appeared in court in the same outfit told TVC News that he wasn't given any change of clothes as ordered by the court. How have you been, sir? I've been well, thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you too. We are still on your same outfits. Yes. What's the problem? Why? Uh, they, didn't, they didn't give me any outfits. They didn't give you any outfits? <laughs> After the proceedings, he spoke on the security situation in the southeastern part of the country, saying anyone using IPOB to commit any form of crime is a criminal. Violence mm -hmm. or subversion in the, name of in the name of Biafra is not part of this family. Mm -hmm. Our family is noble, it's called IPOB, it's all over the world. So you condemn anything that has to do with killing in total. Why would I kill and violence? Yes. 
people, so people have sacrificed my parents for them. Why would I want to kill any other person after that? He disassociated himself from such activities as persons are taking advantage of his detention to commit havoc. Anybody involved in any form of violence or this is in the southeast in the name of IPOB, I don't the let me come out of this nonsense, this mess. Two minutes only. Only two minutes, I, I guarantee you. And there will be peace in the East, not just South. Everywhere in the East, if not the entire South. My right to fair hearing must be observed and based on the standard. They brought him to Kenya into this dog and allowed him to talk with that his lawyer. You are talking about your health condition. What exactly yes. is wrong with you, sir? I have congenital heart failure. Congestive heart failure is called. From the medication, you can tell. So they're basically trying to keep me alive. So that when, when they calculate that, that I'm about to give up, that my heart is about to pack up, they will now say go. So when I go outside, I will die outside. That's what they're trying to do. The medications they've been giving to you yes. has not been working. It's not, it's not working. If it's working, why would I have all these uh, lumps underneath my... And, they ha and he has written a petition to the Nigerian Medical uh, Association uh -huh. where they brought one quack doctor, somebody who's not a doctor, to treat him. To come and try and treat mm -hmm. him. But up to now, they have no... They don't know what they're doing. And they know they don't know what they're doing. Or else, why would I have this? I'm seeking for a non-custodial um, um, arrangement yes. by the court. You said because house arrest. Exactly. Yes. I don't mind house arrest because I'll defeat them. In this court, I'll defeat the government of Nigeria. Yeah. The whole world will see it. Where is the um, treasonable felon? Where is it? It's All these years, journalists are shouting, treasonable treason, treason. What's yeah. the treason today? It's gone. It's somewhere this um, <laughs> tourism charge will go. I don't, I'm thinking of another capital offense that can charge me. Maybe, um, I don't know, impregnating the wife of somebody. I don't know what other thing they're going to charge. Are you saying you are innocent of all these charges? Yes. They, 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 the federal government, they know I'm not guilty. My only guilt is that I'm fighting for my people. And I will fight for them. For justice, okay, sir, last for justice and fairness and equity everywhere. Last question. Question. Has your family been able to... Keep anybody to using IPOB to commit crime is, is a criminal. It's not, it's not part of this family. Our family is based on four cardinal points. You must be without fear before your enemies. You must speak the truth always, even if it leads to your death. You must help the poor and those who cannot help themselves and be of good character that God may love thee. That's who we are. We are only allowed 30 minutes each as council on only Mondays and Thursdays for a cumulative period of two hours to wise a week to consult with him separately. And the federal government is fisting to have an accelerated trial. Yes, we do want an accelerated trial, but we have to have it under an environment that respects section 36 sub 6 b and c of the nigerian constitution it's all about fair hearing it goes to the ground now it goes to the basic norms of the society that you must hear the other side and to hear the other side he has to have an adequate facility to prepare his defense and to consult his lawyers it's the constitution that said it it's not us that said it so we came to my lord with an application and said listen it's impossible for us to conduct this trial under this atmosphere of interference with his right to cancel. They eavesdrop on our conversations in the little cubicle room of 10 by 10 where we consult the masses and because they have secret listening devices and secret photographic and videographic devices. They listen to our conversations secretly. They take our secret photograph and we adduce this evidence before my lord they they they, they, they confiscate our legal documents they don't allow us to take notes pray you may be lay men and lay women the general public may not be lawyers but is this fair how can you have trial under circumstances like this it's not possible it's been tanyaku adjourned to april 17th for continuation of trial she held that the trial must go on one way or another Celestina in reactive C News, Abuja. Right, uh, gentlemen, now the is speaking again. Yes, um, I have always demanded for a political solution to this matter. And I will not change, no matter what people say about me. 
I will not change. I still believe that this kind of matter is best resolved um, in the form of a political solution. We lost um, the first republic uh, minister, Bazulike Amechi, who was one of the people who had so much influence on Namdi Kanu. We met with him a number of times, and he told President Buhari that if he will release Namdi Kanu to him, that he could guarantee that he will be of good behavior and he will renounce his uh, subversive um, um, <clears throat> agitation. Unfortunately, uh, Basilica Amici is no longer uh, around. Again, former governor of Anambra State, Ezefe, Chukemeka Ezefe, was also someone who had so much influence on um, Namdi Kanu. He, he respected Ezefe so much, the hyperb elements and all. As if it's also out of the way. My own belief is that since the president said during his campaign that he will negotiate with um, agitators in the southeast, it makes sense to take a second look at the matter and find a political solution. We want peace in the southeast, and if the release of Unam uh, de Kano will guarantee that I'll be happy to see us uh, take that step because it's in everyone's interest. Now, because um, there's a certain individual in Finland who is pushing our people to violence in the southeast, we can see that despite the fact that Namdi Kanu has officially banned sit at home in the southeast, sit at home is still being enforced forcefully by some elements believed to be loyal to the, the factional leader of IPOP. But in my view, a political solution is possible, and I am encouraged by the way Nam Dekano spoke you know, uh, during the last week, especially his use of the word subversive, that anyone involved in criminal and subversive acts in the Southeast is not to be identified with IPOM. So the word subversive that he used for me was like um, the game changer. It suggests to me that he is prepared to give up his armed struggle against the Nigerian state. If we can get firm guarantees that Nam Kano will give up his struggle, his armed struggle against the Nigerian state, especially having now spoken about subversion, spoken against subversion. Honestly, I'm convinced that um, a political solution is possible. I'm not going to change at this time and say no. This is what I've always said. You know, um, some people believe that I do not like the Southeast. But on this program, I have demanded for political solution to Kano's matter more than any Nigerian journalist alive. I'm very sure of that. And there's no way I will hate the Southeast and be doing that. And not agreeing that Peter will be won the election does not mean that I hate the Southeast. I'm a proud um, holder of a key traditional title from the Southeast, and I will wear that badge proudly on
until the rest of my days. Our good friends from the Southeast, I want peace in the Southeast. Whatever we need to do to bring us peace in the Southeast is what I will support, no matter who sucks is God. And that's where I stand. All right. Mr. So, Kim, Biki talked about the guarantee that he would drop uh, his arms and stop this agitation against the Nigerian states. Yes. Um, I also um, agree with BKO. The last time we spoke about Namdu Kalu here, I also said that what we need is a political solution and not a judiciary solution. And I gave instances. I said there's one Sunday Bo who is practically doing the same thing um, that Namdu Kalu did by some of his pronouncements and the rest of them. And um, Security agencies stormed this place. He escaped. And, um, and they found himself in Kotonu, in, Be in Benin Republic. And at the end of it, uh, everything went on, and he has been released. And Sunday Boho is back home. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Sunday Boho is back home. The same security agencies that we are after Sunday Boho, nobody has, both the DSS and security agencies, nobody has raised their eyebrow. Abbas is coming back. He's everywhere. Nobody has thought about, talk about going to arrest him. That's the political solution. Um, um, Omo Yele Shoure was accused of treason. Mm. He was taken to court. The Buhari government seized his passport. In fact, the court restricted Shoure from moving out of Abuja mm. for years. And he couldn't move out of Abuja. He was in Abuja until this government came in. And the political solution was that case was discontinued. Was discontinued. The AGF wrote that it should be discontinued. So he was giving back his passport. He is in New Jersey, United States of America, now, as we speak. And that is why I asked, why is it that that of Namdi Kalu is different? different? So, and I totally agree with what Namdi Kalu said. It may not be total that, yes, the issue of insecurity will stop totally. But I can assure you, that was the day I was asked on this program. I said, what is the guarantee that if Namdi Kalu is released, that there is security in here? And I said that I can hit my job. I'm from the Southeast. Yeah. A proud man for that matter. And I can tell you for free that if Namdi Kalu is released today, most of the beneficiaries of the insecurity regime will disappear from those, the face of the earth. Those urchins will run away. They will disappear. I have said it on this program as well. There is no governor in, 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 in Satis that has the command, that commands the respect and followership that. In fact, if Namzi comes, it comes to a point that if Namzi will be allowed to go through the meal, he will say that this is the person, whoever he said that he's supposed in Satis to be governor, that is the person that the people will vote for. That is how much the Igbos, those of Satis hold respect him. And I. Say, I will say once again that the federal government should find a political solution. If we want to find a solution to this security, because some people are benefiting from what is happening. Yes, and that is the fact. Yes, yeah, some people are benefiting. All these riffraffs and all sorts of things, there are no government, or on God, no men, and the rest of them. Nobody will try all this nonsense if none of them. Because, because the truth is, if you are even saying you are doing it because yes. this man is in detention. And the man have come out and to say that. out. And so what excuse? In fact, he said something, something he said. He said, how can you say that you are fighting? For me, mm. or for this thing. At the end of it, so the people you are still you fighting know. for you are the people you are holding down. Well, look at what he so, said. He said, yeah. we, we have come to save our people, not to enslave them. That is it. See, now, despite all the reasons, people still observe that. Too. And the yeah, iPod came out to say, afraid, they, because, because iPod came out and said, okay, fine. Even if we were talking about it, the only time you say at home, we have a seat at home, is the day I'm going to court. He, iPod came back later to say, we've abolished every, everybody, go about your business. But some people are still enforcing and killing people in the yeah. Southeast. And that is where I think. Uh, so, I personally, my personal opinion on this program is that I appeal to President Bola Mentinubu to look at this issue as it is presently and let us find a political solution to this problem. Yes, there are some people that can be able to guarantee that. And for goodness sake, it wasn't like Nandu Kano. What happened was that his house was invaded. By military men. And he has to decide, the guy has to find a way out. Right. He ran away. He ran away. 
For his life. For his life, yes, that's it. And the court has ruled, despite the, what um, this thing, they go up to the point of uh, the court of appeal and said that his arraignment was illegal because we, the way and manner he was, the Supreme Court have said no. Let us go back. No, let's, the let's, issue of his, this uh, is a um, 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 so, uh, 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 activities. activities. Mm. But I believe that this issue can be handled politically. But in the meantime, he also raised some issues. He says uh, the drugs they are administering on him are not working and all of that. Yes, and also uh, that it should be sent to Kujé. Yes, that's what Kujet. he said. No, no he's even, he has gone beyond Kujé now. He's saying that they should place him on, on house arrest. arrest. Because if we don't want to put him in Kujé prison, mm, he's arrest. saying, okay, if he, he, he would like to be under house arrest and all that. Those are issues that he brought up. He said, uh, if I'm outside, no idiot can try this rubbish. They know me very well. Uh, he said... If I'm, uh, if I'm released, in two minutes, this nonsense will stop. Who is the idiot that I give an order in the East and uh, it will counter it? Who is the bastard that we speak when I'm talking? Mm. Who is the bastard? Nobody can. I am. And I'm the canon. So he, he, he spoke the way he had never spoken. He said, I don't mind house arrest. Because in this court, I will defeat the federal government. The federal government knows I'm not guilty. My only guilt is that I'm fighting for my people. Anybody who is using IPOP to commit crime is a criminal. He is not part of our family. Those killing people are criminals. We have come to save our people, not to enslave them. You know? So right. it's, um, as I said, uh, Alian. He said anybody conduct any form of violence or subversion in the name of Biafra is not part of the family, he's a criminal. Yeah. I hold on to that word, subversion. He is in detention today because of his subversive activities against the Nigerian state. Now we hear him speaking against yes, subversion. Yes. I think this is indicative of a man who has weighed all that has happened around them. One of the big regrets you will have is the activities of those cultists and outlaws who are killing people in the name of IPOP. There is no way Anandi Khan will be happy to see the people that he fought for being killed in the name of Sitatum and the rest of them. And it's affecting the economy of the Southeast. And now, right. as far as it's concerned, if he is released, he can sort out that problem. We hope so. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to our final topic for today. After much outcry, the remuneration of judicial officers is getting the required attention. The House of Representatives has passed a bill for an act for upward review of the salaries, allowances and fringe benefits of judicial office holders in the country with a total monthly package of 5.39 million naira for the Chief Justice of Nigeria. In the executive bill submitted by the Green Chamber by President Bola Tinubu, other justices of the Supreme Court are to earn a total package of 4.21 million naira, while the President of the Court of Appeal is to earn a total monthly package of 4.48 million naira. The bill seeks to amend certain political, public, and judicial office holders, salaries and allowances, Act Number no. 6 of 2002, by deleting Section 2B, Part 2 of the schedule of the Act, and many other provisions relating to the judicial office holders. Babajide Koladio Tutoju, Majid Jamil, and other guests can vast for upward review of allowances of the judges on the program on several occasions, as well as the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Monica Dungwamesen. Let's share part of that discussion with you. Our dedication to justice extends beyond the courtroom. It is unfortunate that in light of the increases in costs since the last review, justices continue to live almost beggarly lives in service of our dear nation. The effect of this leaves much to be desired. Naturally, this contributes to the stresses and adverse health challenges experienced by the nation's finest judges. 
point to what Honorable Judges if men official vehicles have exceeded the recommended service threshold of four years. Some of these vehicles have been in use for over a decade. This means that justices who have been serving this court and this nation for over 10 years are still grappling with all vehicles in the execution of their duties below those used by the judges of the lower court. We can continue to treat judges in the manner that we are treating them, including the appeal court judges that, in my view, are very, very important because of the role that they play uh, and, the, and the size of the, of the court itself. So something has to be done. Someone like President Obasan uh, Tinobu, who in Lagos set the high standard in terms of welfare of judges, we saw judges being provided with uh, posh cars for the first time. Yeah, and many of them, you know, uh, um, were really happy about that. President Tinubu is the president now. We want to see that replicated at the national level. If we are saying we want an independent judiciary, a judiciary in which the judges will freely give judgment from the, from, from, from the, from the inner recesses of their hearts, then the things that they need, the tools that they need, have to be provided. The, 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 their budget has to be sufficient to cater to those uh, multiple needs. Here there is autonomy of the judiciary. Uh, their own allocation is on first line charge, but the funding is still not enough. The ICT department should be well funded. Like, I'm happy that we have a president who did it in Lagos, in the, at the federal level now. So this call is at the appropriate time. We want Tinumbu to replicate what he did for the judiciary in Lagos at the federal level, not just at the appellate court. Then there are medicals in, I mean, both during and post service. In September 2021, the president of the Court of Appeal, Monica, uh, Justice Monica uh, Dongba Mensah, mm -hmm. lamented that the salaries of judicial officers and uh, staff have not been reviewed since 2008. When she complained, the former president said, okay, that they were going to do something about it. I waited and waited until the uh, former president left office. It was not done. It was not done. So how do you create a situation in which judicial officers, uh, judges of the Court of Appeal, are this poorly paid? It's a terrible thing. If we want the best, we want to get the best out of them, and we want them to be incorruptible, we want them to do their work diligently and with fear of God, the things that they deserve have to be provided. The Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal uh, uh, Committee commission, com or, uh, commission yeah, yeah. should, as a matter of, of urgency. urgency, do something about the salaries and the allowances of our, I mean, um, mm -hmm. of, of our judges. Right, uh, just then, these are the kinds of reports that give us joy, you know. Yes, of uh, course, at the end of the day, we appeal to the president to do something, and um, the president has done it. This is, um, these are the things that make me uh, proud as a journalist, to speak to the people in power and see them take action on what you uh, told them to do. When we came into the studio to discuss um, that issue, we discovered that there were some civil servants lower in hierarchy. In fact, the, those high-ranking judges are graded in the same category as federal lawmakers. Mm -hmm. But today, the CGN 
or the president of the Court of Appeal, they don't earn what federal lawmakers earn. Whereas, in the grand scheme of things, they are graded in the same category as those, as, as a senator, for example. But they don't earn the same, they are even, they are even civil servants in some of the, um, in some ministries who earn higher than the CGN of our country. Civil servants, ordinary civil servants. Because there are places where people get paid far higher than their colleagues in other ministries uh, and parastatas. Places like uh, DMO, the CBN, NMPC. NCC. They earn far higher than fellow civil servants. There's even apartheid in, the, in terms of uh, the, the remuneration of uh, public servants. So, you know the former president said some time ago that there are some civil servants who are higher than the president of this country. Mm. So some things need to change. The president has done this, and I'm really impressed because he's done it in a way now, because since 2008 they didn't increase salaries of judges. Now he has done it in a way that even if they don't increase it again for a long time, they will be able to enjoy this and drink water on top of it. And you see, Jane, 5.39 5 million a month. I believe that this will help us um, even alleviate the financial burdens and pressures that judges face. And uh, it will also enhance and motivate uh, them in many ways and mitigate external pressures to help, then you don't pay a, pay a judge uh, good wages. You have no moral right to complain that he took a bribe, you know? So this will at least help them to be more independent, knowing that ah, the taxpayer, taxpayers are paying you well. So you shouldn't look in the direction of that person who wants to bribe you. Mm. It will really help us. And I'm not saying that that has banished corruption in the judiciary. Mm. But hopefully, it will go a long way. Sikir, one challenge off the table. <laughs> well, um, this is commendable, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, we said it time and time again that judiciary officers or judicial officials, especially the judges, um, need living wages, as it were. I remember vividly a retired um, federal high court judge, um, Taiwo Taiwo. I retired, lamented, see, I read one of the interviews, I think he's a judge, and the wife is also a judge. Federal High Federal High Court, yes. I lamented uh, that, for goodness sake, if you know what we are paid, you, you won't believe it. And um, these are people that sit on judgment over billions and billions of uh, In the High Court alone, most, you know, most cases, financial crime and the rest of them goes to the High Court streets. And um, this are, when there's a case in the bank, and you're talking about trillion, trillion, these are people that sit on them. And, so I think that this is a welcome development. I hope that also the justices, as it were, and CJN and the judicial officer, will also reciprocate this. This will reflect in their judgments. Mm. Because we also, that is also an issue. It is for us to pay them very well now. And it's also for them to be able to make sure that the judgment that comes out of their chamber is also something that we can celebrate because of late the judiciary has been on the eye on the stop. That is what part I was also severance. Part of um, um, the deal is that also the severance allowance of the CGN could go as much as about 80 million when he retired. Mm. That is good. That's cool. So that is very good. That means after retirement, the man knows that at least he will still have something that he mm. can be able to take care of. Because we are talking about pension. What that one is pension. People are we are commending the governor of Ekiti State. When the CGN retired, he also be, supposed to be collecting pension. That is part of his pension. And that is, that is what. But part of it also means that it shouldn't be limited to only the judiciary. Let us ask ourselves, what is the average salary of a professor in a university? Okay. That is also a five, that is a four-star general when it comes to academics, or three-star, as you name it. How much is the salary of a professor, somebody that has spent all his years in university, at the end of it all is any 500,000? or 700,000 a month. And you say the man should be, he can't even jackpot. 
because at his age, the man can, <laughs> he cannot start, except he start becoming an external examiner or whatever. Oh, some, is, uh, yeah. some old, uh, you know, they take them, uh, they take them as um, uh, whatever you. But that is uh, then. Let us go to so, the military, the police. Why I'm saying this is uh, why I'm saying this is that let us not just focus on just the, the police. No, how much is the salary? How to do it? In yes, a way let us. Reach how much service. does an a, a DIG in the police earn? DIG. That is the highest rank what before the age. What much is a constable? The police, the soldiers that were killed in coma mm. and, and were beheaded and the rest, how much is the lieutenant colonel that was killed? Ask yourself how much is earning a month. Those other soldiers, the major, the captain. So what I'm saying is that we should start looking at in as much as, and that is why I put living wage. Li living people wage should have living wages. Wherever you find yourself, how much does a major general Oh, the military is not doing well. The military is not doing well. How much does a major general earn a month? Even the chief, even the services, if you, if you are told how much they earn, they earn. So what I'm saying, in a sense, is that now that we've started with the judiciary, which is a very, very commendable one, let us also move to the other aspects. The ones I don't like talking about. I will be the, happy to see the minimum wage uh, increased on May 1st, because there are speculation now that the president may announce a new Is it to the 500,000? Uh, no, that he will announce a new minimum okay. wage on uh, workers. Workers. Okay. I'll be very happy May 1st. if we can do it uh, that quick. I know there is still debate and all that. Uh, it takes time, but that will be the best workers' day gift that the president can give workers. workers. Hopefully, because a lot of the senior uh, civil servants, even in Abuja, some of them can't take their vehicles to work, yeah, because they, in, after the removal of subsidy, they can't foil, they it's can't costly foil it. to move your car. They can't, foil, they can't so foil it. On their salaries, is tough, and it's not everybody that is a thief. Yes, mm -hmm. there are many civil servants who are as thieves. They are the ones who even teach politicians, you know, how to steal. But it's not everybody that is a thief. Some, no matter the pressure, they will not steal. They have conscience. They will not teach. They will not touch what does not belong to them. We have to think of those people who would rather die than steal. steal. We have to give them living wages. Is, is, that is the best we can do. Um, That's the best we can because do. Because we are saying that also, also our colleagues. Let us, you know, we are always projecting, oh, take care of this. Most often, that we, ask, we only project for people to be taken care of and forget to even ask for us to be taken care of. Because some of our colleagues mm. are finding it difficult. And you know this as a fact. We have to appeal, not only those in the private sector, even those in the uh, government um, establishment. And once so minimum least, wage, you we, see, when once minimum wage is so, increased, we, our, 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 our is colleagues called, are suffering. If our colleagues are in, uh, working in the public sector, or working for news agency of Nigeria and all that, once a new minimum wage comes in, every worker benefits. That consequential increase goes to everybody because if the minimum wage, if level one to six benefits, what it means is that they will start any higher than their bosses if you don't add to what their no, bosses get. Bosses so there is always debate about what percentage level seven to 10 should get, what percentage level 10 to 15 should get. So everybody gets something ahead of you, move everybody forward so that the junior does not come as a result, a new minimum way to earn higher than. And the so senior it, it, I'm looking forward to that new minimum wage. It will move what people earn a notch higher. Even the senior people, they too will earn higher because it's about percentage. If they give you 20% or 25%, it will be way higher than what you are earning now. You know, So the Nigerian worker needs to be better uh, taking care of, not just identifying a few ministries, I mean, a few parastatas of government or agencies where people earn so much money. We have to move around. No, no agency or government should be treated uh, like it's more important than others. Yeah. Yeah. The, the armed forces, too. The armed forces. You should not treat the police as inferior to the, to the, to the army. Mm -hmm. Right. 
because they, that is what they complain about. All right, that gentlemen. We don't treat them like they are important. So we have something to go. has to it's, be done about that. It's a good way to end the show today. Thank you so much, Siki, and it's so yes, good to um, see you again. I, I just to say this quickly, um, happy birthday to one of our colleagues, Azun Arinze, who is also launching his book tomorrow. Happy right. birthday, my Happy brother. birthday to you. Uh, thank you so much, Vikhail. Yes. Exactly. Right. And thank you very much for watching. That's all on Journal of the Sangout on Sunday. Join us tomorrow for the regular episode of the program at 5 p.m. You can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tonight at 11.30. We are on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Ola Jumokio Latuji. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. The Inspector General of Police has met with senior officers to review the state of security. We are continuing our coverage of the arrest of Godwin Amethyele. The Senate has summoned the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to properly brief the Senate regarding the state of the economy. President Bola Tinisbu has announced the total removal of fuel subsidies. The first subsidy is gone. What they will never take is threat. Let's now bring you more development from Ibadan, the your state capital, where an explosion has taken place. Tell us about this incident. TVC News. First with breaking news. as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. What are the news from every perspective? Covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Yoruba is one of the major languages spoken in Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa. It has an actual community of about 30 million speakers throughout West Africa. They are a tribe that cherishes their culture and values. By custom, traditional rulers oversee their domains and act chiefly as custodians of culture. Often. They are accompanied and eulogized by royal bards and palace chanters. This is Ilefe in southwest of Nigeria. Every morning as the cock crows, the Ijala Orni salutes his imperial majesty, the Orni, with his chants. The Oni is reminded of his ancestry, cultural eminence, and the duty these impose on him towards his subjects. For an act of deep cultural significance, chanting has been a part of the Yoruba as far as human memory can travel. Having studied the significance of these form of verbal arts, 
through the popularization gained from the legendary Yoruba chanter Sulaiman Aremu Ayilara, nicknamed Ajobiewe, I decided to explore its place and use for cultural preservation in the 21st century. <laughs> I visited Ajobiewe in his office and he explained